averages really suck. People use them way too often to make analysis based on data. So over here I have three countries, Laos, Vietnam, and Cambodia. Now you might think that Laos is the highest by far than Vietnam, than Cambodia, but you can't really derive conclusions and I'm gonna show you why. So over here, we can see that Laos only has three data points. So the other ones have more data points, which means that you're gonna be able to derive much more uh, useful conclusions based on those rather than Laos, which has very, very, very few data points. But we can get this chart, but then we can also see not just the data points, but this. This is the box and whisker. This is what everyone should be using every time you think, oh, I need to look at an average. You need to use a box and whisker chart as well as looking at the count. A box and whisker chart shows you the spread of data. So here, for example, we compare Cambodia and Vietnam. Cambodia has a lower average, 46 to 57, but really Cambodia is a lot more reliable because Vietnam could be over here, over here, over here. So an average is not really useful at predicting what is the expected number. People tend to think of average as what is typical, but that couldn't be further from the case in this one or in this one. But in Cambodia, average and typical is a lot more relevant. So let's look at the source data. But before we do, I am David Benayim and I regularly make videos on Excel, Power BI, PowerPoint, Word, Teams, Outlook, all of these applications. So if you like what I'm doing, then please feel free to click the like button and also subscribe for more. So here is the data in Excel. And as you can see that Laos only has three data points and I have my box and whisker and also this, this is called the Pareto chart. I'll show you how to make these later on. But you can also have this slicer, which is interactive. So if you just wanna see the history, you can click on that, science, maths, and it will give you all of those for both of these charts. As you can see, it's filtering just for maths, filtering just for history, etc. So this is a really, really useful thing that I'm gonna show you how to make all of these in this video and explain exactly what all these components mean and all what they do and how to use them. What is a box and whisker? It is a way of showing the spread of data as well as um, just the mean. So the X is the mean or what we typically think of as the average, which is all the points added up divided by the count of points. But then you also have this, this is the median, which is the middle value. This is the lower quartile, this is the upper quartile. So this point means that 75% of all the values in the data set are above this point, 41.25, and 25% of them are under. This is the lowest point, the minimum. This is the highest point, the maximum. Occasionally you will get a, another dot out here. This is called an outlier. And I'll talk about what an outlier means as well when you're looking at box and whisker plots. So firstly, you need to set your data up like this, where you have one column going for uh, each category. Let's look at it here. So for example, I've got, I'm just gonna copy and paste it over here. I've got one column with the subject, one column with each data point. So in this case, we're just gonna do mail. So select your data, go to the insert tab and choose here and choose box and whisker plot like that. And then the default, I particularly don't like the fact that these are in light blue. So I almost always will make them a shape outline of black like that. And then if you have just uh, one data point, you don't need to have a legend. You can just have it showing like this. Um, so that is the basic way of doing a box and whisker plot. But let's look at how to recreate what I just showed you before. So here we've got an extra column with an extra breakdown, whatever that is. And we've also got a column for male, a column for female. So that will mean that it determines it to be two categories if you have two numerical columns and one text column. And then we have this one, which is one. It's actually just all of them say one. We'll look at why I put that in a second. This is data that I got out of Microsoft Forms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to analyze, well, 
how many people said each of these things. So this is kind of like a Likert scale, although I'll show how to use Power Query to convert a Likert scale to something more useful in another video. But here we can see, you know, zero to 15%, 15 to 30%, 30 to 45, et cetera, in terms of what is your email communication? So do you use email over 60% of the time and chat applications or Teams a lot less? Then you would put it this way. Then from here, I gave them ratings. So I went with the lowest one being minus two, uh, then minus one, then zero in the middle, and then one and two. I find it useful to put zero in the middle of Likert ratings because zero is kind of the neutral category. So um, I did actually export this from Microsoft Forms, and then I did some adjustments to get it looking like this. So let's say here I am that I have the raw data and I've got like how many emails per day, what Teams features do they currently use, what are other webinars they've attended. This is actually real data from webinars that I've done and how many hours a week do they work on Teams, always, never, one to three hours, less than one hour, etc. And communications method that they use and then the answer that they gave to that one and here is the rating for it. So I'm going to use a Boston Whisker chart with these two columns. Um, so I can create one right off the back, but instead I'm going to select this data. I'm going to do insert and table. A table is a fantastic feature that most Excel people don't know exists. You can do all sorts of formatting tricks with it, but I'm going to use it because that allows me to create a slicer. If you go to insert slicer, also in the insert tab, then we're going to get it to look at emails per day. We're going to get it to look at hours per week on Teams and uh, communications method. So these are effectively just slices, really. So if I click on this one, for example, it will just filter this to show me only the chat app. If I click on this, it will filter to show me only the chat app and that. If I click on this, it gets rid of them. But what slices can do is they can hover over points and they don't have to be in your original data set plus they can link to multiple charts at the same time or pivot tables so i'm going to select the comms method this column and the next column and i'm going to do insert and then over here in the statistical charts you have box and whisker plot like this and this is how it's showing me now now if i use the slicer in this one, I will just filter for only that category. But really what is useful is using a slicer of a category not in this field to filter it in different ways. Now you are noticing probably that this is disappearing. That's okay, we're going to fix that in a second. So moving here on one side, I'm going to create a new column that just has a value of one. So I'm gonna type in one and then I'm going to just drag it down, double click and then it drags down the whole table like that. And then I'm going to create something that looks at how many rows there are of the data by clicking on this column and then holding down control, clicking on this column that just says one. You're gonna see why I'm doing this in a second. And you can go to insert, also in statistical charts, the second one, there is a Pareto chart. I have another video where I talk about Pareto charts. I really love these. But this shows me a count effectively. If I delete this, and I'm going to make this Pareto line to have an outline of white, or no outline, rather. And I'm going to call this just a count. And this is just how many data points there are each one. In fact, I can just add data labels because there are very few of them. And if I want to, I can format data series and give it a gap width. So it looks a lot more like a regular chart. There we go, 55 is good. And what this does is cut that and paste it back up here. The next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that these don't disappear when I filter them like that and shrink up. And to do that, I'm going to click on one object, press Control A to select all objects right click and choose size and properties. And here I'm going to say, don't move or size with cells. So that they just say where they are like that. 
And for example, over here, I can see that Teams only has four data points. And what that means is that the term Teams is only mentioned four times. So one, two, three, and four, like that. So that's what this count means, because a box and whisker chart is not very reliable if you only have four data points. So it's useful to have the count as well as the chart. So now that we've got these objects, we can just click on one, control A and cut. As I said, I click on this and make an outline of black. If you click on this and then go to format data series, you get this pop up. You can say the default is show outer points and show mean markers. So the outer points are these ones. Uh, the mean markers are the X's. Uh, you can also have a mean line. I don't tend to like to use that. Uh, particularly when you have multiple ones, it can get irritating. Also show inner points just means show all the points inside, which again can be quite a lot of points. Um, so it can be quite a lot to uh, put in there. So what I tend to like is effectively the default options, which is this one and this one. So if you go to this website from Microsoft that was released when Box and Whiskers and other stats charts were released for Excel 2016, it does explain quite well how to do the outliers. So here, this image is really useful. So it shows the outlier region up here and down here. You have the interquartile range, IQR, and that is the top upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Then you multiply it by one and a half, and then you add that to the top of the upper quartile and to the bottom of the lower quartile. Anything that is not anything that is outside of that range is deemed to be an outlier. So that's why even if you have the minimum and the maximum, there could still be outliers that are higher or lower than those points. So looking at our dashboard here, I can see that I have a couple of outliers here that could even be extreme examples where the mean falls outside of the interquartile range there. Even though we have 16 data points here, um, all of them will be at minus two here, whereas these two dots are exceptions and the mean is therefore in between those. I'm gonna get rid of that filter. And I can see them like this. And we see that it's towards the top, but it's not there. If we don't have the lower one, that means that effectively the minimum and the lower quartile are the same amount, which again can be quite common in Likert scales. Likert scales here, I started at minus two, at minus two, minus one, zero, one, and two. So 2.5 and two, minus 2.5 don't even exist. So I can even format axis and give it the manual minimum and maximum like that, uh, because I know I'm never gonna go more than that. Uh, but the mean can fall in between them, of course. So over here, we have the outliers. Now, what is making this an outlier? Well, I start off at minus two and 1.5. So that's where my interquartile range is. So that is 0.5, the difference. You multiply that by one and a half, you get 0.75. So that would mean from here, it would go to minus 0.75 and anything above minus 0.75 would actually be deemed to be an outlier like that. So as you click through, you get other versions of outliers as well. Sometimes there are none, which shows you that the data is either very low like this, just one data point, or that there are um, all within the expected range. So over here, you can right click and go to format data series and get this pop up. You can see inclusive and exclusive median. This is a statistical thing you have equals quartile and you have inc and x effectively with inclusive the median is used to calculate both the lower and the upper quartile with exclusive it is used to calculate neither the upper nor the lower quartile if it's an odd number of data points if it's an even number of data points it doesn't matter actually so over here i have an odd number i have 15 data points and if I look at the median, the median is 30 in both cases. Now, is the point 30 used to calculate 
the lower quartile and the upper quartile or not. You can also add data labels. I tend not to do this. They get very messy, particularly around the mean. And although you can click on one and delete them, it still gets a little bit messy to put them all alongside each other. Couple of words of warning. They do not work with pivot tables. So this is summarizing the same data. If I go to insert and any of these charts, I will get this error message that says it doesn't work with a pivot table. If you are confused about how to set up your data with any chart in Excel, I recommend starting in PowerPoint actually. If you add a new blank slide, you can go to insert and chart and then choose box and whisker and then press OK. And what PowerPoint does is it gives you a placeholder, which Excel doesn't do. So it shows you how it would look if these were the different data points. So we have columns for the series for the colors and you have category one, category two, category three. Also works with other obscure charts like a sunburst. I would never have known how to set up a stun sunburst with this branch stem and leaf had I not done it through this placeholder. I don't use this chart that often, but that is the best way of learning how to do it rather than through Excel. That doesn't give you the placeholders. All right, well, if you like this video, please feel free to check out my other stuff. I have loads more videos on PowerPoint, Teams, Power BI, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom,